nanoscale. How super resolution microscopy reveals new dimensions of life. William E. Marner, Stanford University. On the 9th of November 1989, I was attending a joint US-Japan conference on excited state dynamics in Hawaii. Well, as you all know, in 1989, the Berlin Wall fell. But in fact, in that same year, another wall fell, which is the first of two molecular walls that I want to describe today. These two new walls have allowed us to see and open up an amazing new world of the nanoscale to see exquisite detail using light. So wall number one involves detecting a single molecule with light. Let's set the scale for this. This is, of course, something you may recognize from the saloon or the bar, which normally has liquor in it, but if it has an ounce of water, then this small container, the jigger, has a huge number of molecules. Going to a smaller object, a snowflake, there's still a huge number of molecules. So you wonder, can we see just one molecule with light? So this particular wall, of course, asks a question. You may say, why should we detect singles? Who, needs, who cares about just one molecule? The answer is, we don't then need to look only at averages. Suppose you're interested in studying streets. Here, if you're this far away from Berlin, you don't see very much, but if you get closer, you know there's streets, but right now, you only see the average street. But if you can see more clearly and observe an individual street, then you know it has grass in it and has so many lanes and so on. So we translate this idea to molecules because we want to know, are all the molecules the same or are they different for various reasons? So this wall was broken in 1989 uh, with my colleague Lothar Kador, and this wall involved seeing a single molecule. There are some pictures of individual molecules that were observed using lasers, optics, low temperatures, extreme sensitivity, and so on. I won't go through all those details, but I want to just say that, uh, I'll just show you even, how do we see molecules now? Here's a particular single molecule called pentacene, five rings together, and the way we can observe it uh, is to shine, uh, let's say, a green laser on it, and then watch what happens. These molecules will emit light, they will fluoresce, and they produce light at a longer wavelength or an orange color. So these fluorescent molecules that we study are just like the molecules that your child may have in, in his or her shoelaces, the day-glow shoelaces. But let's even look at it in a little more detail so you can observe this yourself. So I have a few uh, components here. Uh, first of all, there is a vial of clear water. You, there's nothing in the water, it's totally clear. And I have an orange highlighter. So you can buy these orange, cheap orange highlighters and do this yourself. I just open the vial and I touch the highlighter to the water. And that's all I have to do because now there's these molecules in the water. But can you see them? No, I don't think you can see them very well. So let's make them visible by using the laser light and this fluorescence that I just spoke about. So now the lights will be turned down. And then I will show you what happens when I turn on the laser. Ready? Whoops. <laughs> Sorry. This is a little bit <laughs> difficult. There. Yeah, wow. Isn't that wow? That's great. You know, without even asking, you said, wow. <laughs> I, <laughs> I have a lightsaber, the lightsaber. And so this, these molecules that are in the solution are absorbing the green light and sending it back in a different color. Now, one thing to remember is, I haven't changed the laser, the laser's still green. All this light's coming from those molecules. So when we go to the nanoscale, when we go down to just one molecule, uh, we have to do this very carefully, but really it's simply just diluting and doing this at smaller and smaller and smaller numbers of molecules to get to the single molecule level. So let's move forward. Thank you. So when you do those experiments, 
On the left, I'm, I'm now going to show you uh, molecules in a cell where the fluorescent molecules that I just talked about are attached only to a particular protein in the membrane of the cell, and you see they're dancing around. At room temperature, these molecules in cells are moving all the time due to thermal excitations, and this is essential to life. And you also want to remember that those molecules, which are incredibly tiny, they are not infinitely small, 200 nanometers in size. They're all like little balls. On the right, let's look at some molecules that aren't moving, but those molecules are doing something else that was a wonderful surprise when we saw it. They're blinking. They're turning on and off, even though I'm shining light on them all the time. They have this spectacular uh, random blinking, something that you could not see if you didn't have the ability to observe single molecules. So remember from this uh, that we have molecules who appear to be 200 nanometers in size, although they're far tinier, and they blink as well. Something maybe like fireflies. So many scientists want to see details of the nanoscale inside cells with light. And there's so much to see inside. There's DNA, there's RNA, there's proteins. This is a bacterial cell, already very small, even more little small machines. You want to be able to observe them. So with light, we can label all of the copies of a particular class with these fluorescent molecules. However, if we shine a laser onto this cell and focus it to the smallest spot possible, it's still 200 nanometers in size. That same 200 nanometers came back again. So that's a problem. You want to see the small objects, but the focus laser is not small enough. So that represents a wall that was realized by Ernst Abbe in the, in the 1800s. And here on a spatial scale, I want to illustrate what it means. 100 microns at the far right is about the size of a human hair, and there's many orders of magnitude. And for example, if you want to see cells, they're about 10 microns, bacteria about one. 100 nanometers are, are phage and, and viruses. Uh, there's a single protein at about 10 nanometers. And these single molecules that I've been showing you are at the one nanometer level. So you can use special techniques uh, such as NMR and electron microscopy to see small structures way down here at the smallest scale. But these are difficult for live cell imaging, and, and it's hard to see specific objects. On the other hand, with the light microscopy and fluorescence, it's relatively non-invasive, and we can specifically label biomolecules, as I said. Uh, however, there's the wall. This wall here at about 200 nanometers is Abe's wall, which, uh, in which he said, you cannot see structures or distinguish two structures that are smaller than a, uh, closer together than about lambda over two, wavelength over two. That's the 200 nanometer uh, limit. And so this wall was broken by super-resolution microscopy, which broke through the wall and allowed us to use light to see structures down into the 100, 50, 10, and so forth a nanometer size scale. This was recognized by the Nobel Prize in 2014, and I was uh, happy to share the prize with Eric Betzig and Stefan Hill, who is uh, from Germany, uh, for super-resolution microscopy. Uh, to think about how this wall was surmounted, let's go back to that bacterial cell, very tiny, but uh, every protein of a particular type has been uh, labeled now with one of our fluorescent labels, uh, molecules, and you, you see it's, it's, you can't see anything now, so you might think, well, let's just buy the most expensive microscope possible. Here it is, uh, and you don't see the detail. That's because of this Abe limit I described. Even though the, the little light sources are about one nanometer in size, they appear to be this 200 nanometers from, uh, from Abe's equation. So super resolution changes this image into this image. That's why we're excited about all of this. It is an incredible improvement. This is not a small effect. I'm going beyond the diffraction, the Abe's limit uh, by a factor of five here shows you incredible detail. In this case, you're, we're observing the different locations of the DNA inside the cell with a DNA binding protein. So that's what super resolution can do for you. And, but you still might be asking, well, how does this really work? Well, let me ask you to think about fireflies, these wonderful little organisms that you see in the woods or uh, when it's humid and in a, uh, in a spring night or whatever, and just think about them, and I'll tell you how this works. So, <clears throat> suppose you want to observe the branches of a tree, but it's nighttime. You can't see the branches of the tree. 
But what you can do is to place the fireflies all along the branches of the tree, every branch of the tree. And if you just do that and then just watch what happens, use your camera to take a video of what's going on, they'll be blinking on and off, blinking on and off, blinking on and off, and each time one of them comes on, you, you, in your video from your, t from your cell phone, you find the position of that molecule and re remember it. Then do it for the next, the next, the next. You do it for all frames of this movie and then show all the positions at the same time and you'll see the branches of the tree. So that's how this works, to bypass that limit. Even if they appear to all be a large little spots, this will work. So uh, I'll show you this again now, once more with molecules. On the left uh, is a cell in which the, those are single molecule spots, okay? These are, this is a cell like the cells in our body. On the right are little tiny points, which are the locations of all those molecules. And now, uh, if I, uh, that's one frame of, of my video. Here's the next frame. And remember, I used those blinking molecules that we observed many, many years ago. So the next has different molecules on, and different spots appear. The next one, different molecules, different spots appear. And so as you watch this over time, the incredible picture, uh, the incredible detail uh, of the branches uh, inside the cell appears just like that. Uh, on the left is the old way of imaging, all previous microscopy. On the right is super resolution imaging. So uh, we and others all over the world have been applying this technique uh, to many different kinds of situations uh, where new discoveries have occurred. For example, at the top, this is an, uh, an, the axon of a neuron the, these, the, for communicating uh, nerve impulses throughout the body. And what was discovered is this amazing banding pattern uh, that is uh, periodic along the long axis uh, of, of the, of the uh, axon. On the lower left are images of Huntington proteins in a cell that has a, a, a mutant form, which is equivalent to Huntington's disease. And all of these uh, tiny spots, sorry, all of these tiny spots that you see here, these tiny little structures, were not observable before super resolution microscopy. And on the lower right, uh, there are bacterial cells in which we can observe features and structures and patterns uh, that, were, that were not observable before breaking Abe's wall. Uh, so there's uh, many more things that can be done as well. We can do this in three dimensions now with other power of optics. Uh, on the left is an amazing structure inside a sperm cell in three dimensions. And on the right is something called the lamin, the lamin of the nucleus of a cell, which is a sac that's just inside the, the nuclear envelope here in three dimensions uh, with, with three-dimensional super-resolution microscopy. Notice that there's a channel inside, uh, inside the, the uh, lamin structure that's observed by, by the method, and so on. So the point is, so much more can be seen. Well, there's more fall, walls to fall. In the future, we expect more amazing things to happen. There should be new scientific discoveries about both normal cells, how they really work, because we still don't fully understand that, as well as diseased cells, in the hope of possibly curing diseases. There also should be higher and higher resolution possible with improved optics and better molecules, maybe toward one nanometer ultimately. Uh, and we also expect that there will be a marriage of complementary techniques, including electrons, X-rays, and light. And so what I've really tried to describe to you is that if you can see single molecules, then you have uh, the ability to observe a surprise that, that some of them blink, and now that blinking is being used for super-resolution microscopy, opening up an incredible view of, of the nanoscale. As Yogi Berra said, if you, if, you, if you look really well, then you might see something. Thank you very much.